The other form in which people hold money is as deposits with banks. At any given point of time, people need only some currency for their day-to-day -day needs. For instance, workers who receive their salaries at the end of each month have extra cash at the beginning of the month. What do people do with this extra cash? They deposit it with the banks by opening a bank account in their name. Banks accept the deposits and also pay an interest rate on the deposits. In this way, people's money is safe with the banks and it earns an interest. People also have the provision to withdraw the money as and when they require. Since the deposits in the bank accounts can be withdrawn on demand, these deposits are called demand deposits. Demand deposits offer another interesting facility. It is this facility which lends it the essential characteristics of money that of a medium of exchange. You would have heard of payments being made by checks instead of cash. For payment through check, the payer who has an account with the bank makes out a check for a specific amount. A check is a paper instructing the bank to pay a specific amount from a person's account to the person in whose name the check has been made. Thus we see that demand deposits share the essential features of money. The facility of checks against demand deposits makes it possible to directly settle payments without the use of cash. Since demand deposits are accepted widely as a means of payment, along with currency, they constitute money in the modern economy. You must remember the role that the banks play here. But for the banks, there would be no demand deposits and no payments by checks against these deposits. The modern forms of money, currency and deposits are closely linked to the working of the modern banking system. Currency Modern forms of money include currency, that is, paper notes and coins. Unlike the things that were used as money earlier, modern currency is not made of precious metals such as gold, silver and copper. And unlike grain and cattle, neither are they of everyday use. The modern currency is without any use of its own. Then why is it accepted 
as a medium of exchange. It is accepted as a medium of exchange because the currency is authorized by the government of the country. In India, the Reserve Bank of India issues currency notes on behalf of the central government. As per the Indian law, no other individual or organization is allowed to issue currency. Moreover, the law legalizes the use of rupee as a medium of payment that cannot be refused in settling transactions in India. No individual in India can legally refuse a payment made in rupees. Hence, the rupee is widely accepted as a medium of exchange. Part 1 Let us take the story of banks further. What do the banks do with the deposits which they accept from the public? There is an interesting mechanism at work here. Banks keep only a small proportion of their deposits as cash with themselves. For example, banks in India these days hold about 15% of their deposits as cash. This is kept as provision to pay the depositors who might come to withdraw money from the bank on any given day. Since on any particular day, only some of its many depositors come to withdraw cash. The bank is able to manage with this cash. Banks use the major portion of the deposits to extend loans. There is a huge demand for loans for various economic activities. We shall read more about this in the following sections. Banks make use of the deposits to meet the loan requirements of the people. This is an advertisement generally shown on the television where the bank is asking people to take a loan. In this way, banks mediate between those who have surplus funds, that is, the depositors, and those who are in need of these funds, that is, the borrowers. Banks charge a higher interest rate on loans than what they offer on deposits. The difference between what is charged from the borrowers and what is paid to the depositors is the bank's main source of income. A large number of transactions in our day-to-day -day activities involve credit in some form or the other. Credit or loan refers to an agreement in which the lender supplies the borrower with money, goods or services in return for the promise of future payment. It is festival season two months from now and the toy manufacturer Manoj has received an order from a large trader in town 
for 2000 toys to be delivered in a month's time. To complete the production on time, Manoj has to hire a few more workers for the work. He has to purchase the raw materials. To meet these expenses, Manoj obtains loans from two sources. First, he asks the plastic supplier to supply plastic now and promises to pay him later. Second, he obtains loan in cash from the large trader as advance payment for 1000 toys with a promise to deliver the whole order by the end of the month. At the end of the month, Manoj is able to deliver the order, make a good profit and repay the money that he had borrowed. In this case, Manoj obtains credit to meet the working capital needs of production. The credit helps him to meet the ongoing expenses of production, complete production on time and thereby increase his earnings. Credit therefore plays a vital and positive role in this situation. Savitri's Problem Savitri, a small farmer, grows groundnut on her three acres of land. She takes a loan from the money lender to meet the expenses of cultivation, hoping that her harvest would help repay the loan. Midway through the season, the crop is hit by pests and the crop fails. Though Savitri sprays her crops with expensive pesticides, it makes little difference. She is unable to repay the money lender and the debt grows over the year into a large amount. Next year, Savitri takes a fresh loan for cultivation. But the earnings are not enough to cover the old loan. She is caught in debt. She has to sell a part of the land to pay off the debt. In rural areas, the main demand for credit is for crop production. Crop production involves considerable costs on seeds, fertilizers, pesticides, water, electricity, repair of equipment, etc. There is a minimum stretch of three to four months between the time when the farmers buy these inputs and when they sell the crop. Farmers usually take crop loans at the beginning of the session and repay the loan after harvest. Repayment of the loan is crucially dependent on the income from farming. In Savitri's case, the failure of the crop made loan repayment impossible. She had to sell a part of the land to repay the loan. Credit, instead of helping Savitri improve her earnings, 
left her worse off. This is an example of what is commonly called debt trap. Credit in this case pushes the borrower into a situation from which recovery is very painful. In one situation, credit helps to increase earnings and therefore the person is better off than before. In another situation, because of the crop failure, credit pushes the person into a debt trap. To repay her loans, she has to sell a portion of her land. She is clearly much worse off than before. Whether credit would be useful or not, therefore, depends on the risks in the situation and whether there is some support in case of loss.